Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look like that? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects. But there is an easier way. Thumbtack is the app that makes it easier to care for your home. Pull out your phone and in just a few taps, search, chat, and book highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Download Thumbtack and start caring for your home the easier way. This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony, the dating app to find someone you can be yourself with. Why doesn't eHarmony allow copy and paste in first messages? Because you are unique and your conversations should reflect that. eHarmony wants you to find someone who will get you. How are you going to know who gets you if people send you the same generic conversation starters they message everyone else? Conversations that actually help you get to know each other. Imagine that. Get who gets you on eHarmony. Sign up today. Explore the history of Wish TV, one of Indiana's longest-running television stations. We'll take a deep dive and interview the people who have helped bring some of the most important stories to Indiana since 1954. This is our story, our Wish story, local then, now, and always. Wish TV. Hello, I'm Chris Wakefield, and this is Wishtory. And we're on in three, two. As the clock on the wall strikes 5:56 p.m. on Thursday, July 1st, 1954, Wish TV is officially on the air. The story of Wish TV's genesis is one of innovation, cunning, and improvisation. The skilled journalists and engineers who shepherded the fledgling broadcast station through its first year were nothing short of television pioneers. Their work's impact is still felt in central Indiana 70 years later. Thanks to their ingenuity and bravery, millions of Hoosiers have been witness to history. Wish TV started as an idea in the mind of local businessman Charles Bruce McConnell. A graduate of Arsenal Tech High School, McConnell worked as a route salesman at Hamilton, Harris & Company, a local wholesaler that trafficked in cigarettes and candy. By 1931, McConnell worked up the ranks to manager. His career was flourishing. When asked how he could sell so many cigarettes, McConnell showered praise on one thing in particular, radio advertising. Looking to participate in the advertising gold rush of the 1930s, McConnell hatched a plan to start a radio station of his own. On May 7, 1937, McConnell and a handful of business partners applied with the Federal Communications Commission to operate a radio station in Indianapolis. After three years of waiting, on October 31, 1940, the FCC granted McConnell and his partners at the newly founded Capital Broadcasting Corporation permission to operate Wish Radio, on the AM dial at 1310. How and why Wish was chosen is unknown, but McConnell and his team immediately set out to build a world-class radio company. Broadcasting to two twin 460-foot towers located on the east side of Indianapolis, Wish Radio was headquartered out of the second floor of the Borden Trade Building on the corner of Meridian and Ohio Streets downtown. When Wish Radio debuted on July 26, 1941, its programming lineup was a hodgepodge of shows from local personalities and disc jockeys to nationally syndicated shows from NBC. In the mornings, Wish Radio listeners would wake up to the sound of local news and talk from shows like The Breakfast Club and Sunrise Ranch. During the evenings, they would tune in to dramas and radio plays from NBC with regular news and sports updates from Luke Walton. By the time Bruce McConnell put Wish Radio on the air in 1941, there were only about 7,000 television sets in the U.S., the majority of those being in New York City. Television's popularity was hampered by America's entry into the Second World War after the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Once the war was over, the American appetite for television grew rapidly. On May 30, 1949, WFBM, Indianapolis Channel 6, made its debut. By 1950, over 5 million television sets had been sold. The nation was changing, and so was Indianapolis. Manufacturers like the Ford Motor Company, Western Electric, and Chrysler built large facilities in the city and flooded Indianapolis with good-paying jobs. Wish Radio also went through a transformation during the early 1950s. 
After outgrowing its space in the Board of Trade building, the station moved to a newly built 12,000 square foot space on the second floor of 1440 North Meridian Street on July 28, 1950. The radio station shared the building with a Fidelity Trust Bank branch and the Riddick Piano Company. The new space included a stage and an auditorium large enough to seat 2,000 visitors, known as Studio D. In this studio, radio performances could be held in front of a live audience. Inside this new radio studio, personalities like Bill Faulkner, Luke Walton, and Reed Chapman became household names across central Indiana. John Frame would read the news while Chuckles Chapman told jokes, and Virginia Bird played on the organ. It was also inside this building that Bruce McConnell, now joined by his son Robert, who served as general manager of Wish Radio since 1947, got the idea to enter the rapidly growing television business. By June 18, 1952, Bruce McConnell and his Universal Broadcasting Company submitted an application to the Federal Communication Commission seeking approval to build a second television station in Indianapolis, staking their claim on Channel 8. In the application, McConnell vowed to build a $1 million, 1,000-foot-tall tower that would emit the strongest signal in the nation and had the largest antenna in the state of Indiana. The FCC was also fielding television applications submitted by Indianapolis radio stations WIRE, WIBC, and Cincinnati's WLW. And with this crowded field came controversy as the race to start the city's next TV station had begun. Almost immediately, rival stations cried foul over McConnell planting his flag at Channel 8. Before Wish's application to the FCC, the Crosley Broadcasting Corporation, which operated WLW in Cincinnati, was actively seeking to claim Channel 8 for themselves. But for some unknown reason, once Wish also petitioned for Channel 8, Crosley mysteriously withdrew their application and instead filed for Channel 13. WIBC and WIRE also submitted applications for Channel 13. With the much more powerful Crosley Corporation encroaching on their territory, there was little chance the FCC would favor either of these smaller operations in granting a television license. Officials at WIBC and WIRE warned examiners at the FCC that McConnell may have bribed Crosley to seek greener pastures elsewhere on the dial. The license was delayed for almost one year as examiners investigated the bribery claims. Finally, after Bruce McConnell submitted an affidavit denying any impropriety, the FCC granted Wish permission to operate a television station in Indianapolis on December 4, 1953. By 1954, America had over 20 million TV sets. The first step in building a new station was building the 1,000-foot-tall tower. A location was selected on the east side of Indianapolis. The 40-acre lot was situated at the southeast corner of English Avenue, now called Rawls Avenue, and Post Road. Under ideal conditions, Wish engineers expected that the signal from the tower would have a 75-mile radius. On February 15, 1954, McConnell announced that Wish TV would enter a distribution agreement with ABC Television to broadcast select programs. It was later announced that Wish TV would also briefly carry programming from NBC. In fact, during its first year of operation, Wish TV would carry programming from all the networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, and the Dumont Network simultaneously. For local programming, it was announced that Wish Radio favorite John Frame would jump to television as the first Wish TV news editor, while Luke Walton would provide sports updates each evening. In addition, it was announced Catherine Daniels would adapt her popular weekday 1 p.m. Wish Radio lifestyle and cooking show for Wish TV. As engineers worked feverishly throughout the spring and early summer of 1954 to prepare the station for air, Bruce and Robert McConnell oversaw the addition of a third story to the Riddick building. The new space was needed if Wish intended to house its radio and television operations under the same roof. Construction was completed that June. It was announced that most of Wish TV's local programming would originate from Studio A and Studio D in the Riddick building. A new kitchen was added to Studio A for Catherine Daniels' midday lifestyle show. One of the most important days leading up to the debut of Wish TV was June 26, 1954, when Stokes Grisham, the chief engineer for the station, and his team flipped the switch and began to broadcast a test pattern across central Indiana on Channel 8. 
Reports came in from as far away as Bloomington, Indiana from viewers who were receiving the signal on their television sets. After five days of running the test pattern and fine-tuning programming lineups, station owner Bruce McConnell, general manager Robert McConnell, chief engineer Stokes Grisham, and program director Stephen Briggs determined that Wish TV was ready to take its place in Indiana television history. It was decided that the first program to air would be a 15-minute station introduction, during which viewers would meet the Wish staff, tour the facility, and receive a programming preview from station management. Rather than claim the spotlight himself, Bruce McConnell tasked his son Robert with hosting the dedication program with Stephen Briggs. And so, on July 1st, 1954, for the first time, the lights inside the Wish TV studios at 1440 North Meridian sprang to life and the large RCA cameras stood at attention. And we're on in three, two, this is our story, our wish story. Local then, now, and always, Wish TV. You can find more podcasts from Wish TV on the All Indiana Podcast Network at allindianapodcastnetwork.com.